How's it going everyone? Welcome to our day one impressions of Wuthering Waves. We've just finished playing for the day, done a stream on the channel which you can check out, but if you've missed it or if you... Tauchi stealing the spotlight there. We've got so much to talk about in this as well, from combat to characters, to the gotcha system, to exploration, to the story, to the aesthetic and style, a lot of stuff to go over and just general impressions of day one. A quick disclaimer, this is initial impressions. We've only been playing it for the day so far. But if you missed the videos, I'm gonna recap things here and give you my opinion uh, on what I think of the game uh, and all of that kind of good stuff. All work, no <laughs> Tauchi, a dull girl. Tauchi, you gotta stop this. You keep yourself bustling. If you don't move around too much, you know, they start talking and doing little emotes and stuff, which does give it that little bit of life to the world, but when you're doing a video, it's not the most ideal thing, so we'll try and keep on the move. But do you know what? Let's just start off by changing the time of day so that we can all see everything in its absolute glory. So why don't we start off at, let's say like six in the morning. Hopefully sunrise will be around that time. But we've been playing for the day and there's a lot of similarities with this game to other games that are sort of in the same genre of being an open world RPG with a gacha system, lots of different characters and weapons, upgrade paths, weekly things to do. This one also has co-op in it as well once you reach a certain level. But there's a lot of things that make this game stand aside and I do think that with it being hero games and their past in something like Punishing Grey Raven for example which has phenomenal combat, they've really leaned into that with this and made this really interesting amalgamation of the good combat that you would expect from Kuro, but also the open world, the story, the exploration, and just the ton of things to do out in the world that you would expect from a game sort of within this genre. So let's start off by just talking about exploration and the world, because as you can see, the world isn't as vibrant as other games, like for example, Genshin Impact. But it gives it that little bit more of a like a much more grounded feel and it sets it aside and makes it unique it has really nice landscapes vistas uh we're over the main sort of town the first town area that you come to that we'll go down there and explore as well uh and along with exploring comes some really cool things like parkour and your methods of exploration so for example within this we actually have a glider slowly drains our stamina lets us go where we to go to where we want to but also if we go all the way down and we find like a wall for example here we can actually run up and along walls horizontally. So as long as you have the stamina for it, there's actually quite a lot that you can do. And there is some fall damage if you fall from a really high height, but it's not too punishing. But when it comes to parkour and exploring, absolutely love it. And there is a good reason to explore and collect things too. You may be able to see right now on the minimap, if you follow my cursor up on the left, you can see these little boxes. And these are something that you want to keep an eye out for as you're exploring the world. And they can be in all kinds of places like this one hidden under this bridge here, which gives us a uh, audio casket. And these are worth finding and exploring for in the open world because they add to your levels that you trade them with a merchant that gives you items that let you have more free pulls within the game to get these different characters and weapons to upgrade your team. So when it comes to exploration, you kind of have this amazing tool set of parkour, of reasons to go out and collect things. You even have this really interesting uh, like tool gadget here that lets you do a bunch of things like the levitation one lets you pick up rocks to smash walls to travel around. Uh, you also have the grapple cord, which is really cool. Gives us a bit of air, but there's also grapple points around the map that will zoom us over to them. So when it comes to exploring, the world feels really good to explore. It's really a pleasant feeling to go out there and get things that matter for your account. Uh, different resources to do cooking and crafting because there's in-depth cooking and crafting systems in this as well. But I just wanted to focus on the exploration, the parkour, the traveling methods, because from my day one experience, it's been a blast going around and exploring using these different tools that we have uh, and actually getting things that matter and improve our character. But again, as we go through and talk about more things, this is a beta, it is a proper beta. So things like the actual voice acting in cutscenes is missing. You know, there's some uh, I actually haven't encountered any performance issues myself, but I wouldn't be surprised if we will as we keep playing because it is a proper beta, but they are looking for player feedback. And I'm sure there will be a lot of feedback to give. I have a few points myself that I plan to hand over to them. But next, let's talk about the characters and the combat. So for me, one of the biggest things is, is the combat fun and engaging and in-depth enough that you're going to be playing this for, you know, hours to come 
weeks and months ahead because as you may know in games like this you you're going to be playing them in the long run you're going to be upgrading your characters over time by defeating you know bosses doing events and slowly powering them up and getting your perfect team together so the combat the actual gameplay has to be there and has to be really really good and this is why i think hero games were clever to do this because they are very good at making uh more in-depth and satisfying combat systems uh, so, for example, I've got a few nice characters here that we got really lucky of uh, with pulling. Uh, Tiao Chi here is one of the characters I pulled, as well as Dan Jin. And these are two really interesting and unique characters when it comes to their mechanics. But there's also other characters like Chixia and Yang Yang. And, of course, your main character, Rover, Mind School Paradise, that you get for free throughout the story. And there's more characters you get throughout the story that are all vastly different, not just in their design, but also in how their combat feels. But for right now, I'm going to use uh, Tao Chi as an example because it's an easy to explain moveset that's really cool. So Tao Chi is actually a great sword user. And if we go into the sort of skill tree, we can actually look at some of the skills uh, to explain them a bit better. So, and I'll demo these to you in a sec. But basically, you see our normal attack is a four hit continuous combo. Our heavy attack is actually a really cool counter and parry. Kind of a bit like a guard point, but it's more like a click and hold parry. But it drains your stamina so fast you can only do it for like one second. Uh, and there's other things that come in here with like havoc damage to do with launching your enemies up. Uh, different uh, combo timings on another character that I'll show you in a sec. You have an active ability that basically gives you like uh, th uh, three little things float around you that give you protection. But it was really the, uh, the guard counter on this character that set it aside and made it be really unique. But each character has their own level of depth so you can see like our basic four hit combo here which is really flashy and engaging visually but also feels weighty when you hit enemies because it staggers them it knocks them over and does good damage as a great sword user and then you have the click and hold which does like this shield rapidly drains your stamina and if you get hit during that time you do a real heavy hit back that is very rewarding in the damage it almost does the as much damage as your whole four hit combo but then you have another character like uh dan jin here that has a really interesting move and if we just go into the skills you're going to see it oh, went into the wrong menu there so what's really interesting about this character is that there's different combo strings for it so you have your basic attacks and everything uh over here like a three continuous hit you have your heavy attack uh to continuously consume stamina to launch rapid strikes but then with the active ability tattered vermilion you combo it on the end of your standard attacks and that lets you do basically different combo strings that also give you this like passive scarlet essence buff uh, and it consumes your health depending on which string you do and then it refunds health depending on what attack you do after that or something like that and it just makes the characters each feel super different and unique and in-depth in the combat so like we have like this kind of combo string here or we have like a three hit combo string and then You'll see here above the health, there's actually a bar, which if we were in combat, uh, each character has their own sort of mechanic to do with this bar. Uh, and they're obviously their own attacks and stuff as well. So it goes really in depth on each character. A really cool uh, example is with Chixia here, which is a ranged sort of uh, pistol user. You can also hold down pick to shoot as so. Uh, also has mobility with this. But if you attack enough and build up ammunition here above the health bar, you can then hold down your e-move and do a continuous spray of like an SMG, uh, just continuous crazy spray. So each character has a really cool in-depth difference to them that makes them unique. And that's what makes the game compelling when it comes to its actual gameplay. So I really think, at least from my day one impressions, that the depth is there in the combat and it feels satisfying. And there's the system where you switch between characters when you built up enough charge so that they do a special effect when you bring them out. And then on top of that, each character, much like other games within the genre, have their own elements that they sort of focus on. So in my party right now, Dan Jin is Havoc, whereas someone like Chixia is Fusion, while our main character is Spectra, Yang Yang is Aero. So you have these different combos and things that you can do, and depending on how you switch between characters, you can get different sort of combo effects as well. So there's a lot of depth, which I'm still learning and discovering as we go through. But for the characters, I was really pleased with uh, how their actual gameplay felt. And obviously the visual difference between the characters too, because each one looks distinctly different and is identifiable uniquely, which I really, really like. So we've talked about exploration, we've talked about combat and the characters. Uh, 
the story is missing the VO at the moment, so it's not as engaging in the cutscenes and the talking moments. But there have been some really cool cutscenes, particularly with the boss fight at the beginning, uh, that was really engaging and fun to actually do and was a bit of a challenge. That first boss fight actually did give me a run for my money. So while I can't say too much on the story because we're not very far right now and it's not voice acted, the action scenes within the cutscenes and the story so far have been really cool, like proper anime stuff, which I've been really enjoying. That's the kind of thing that gets me engaged again in the game. So, so far, interesting gameplay, interesting cutscenes. Uh, but the game isn't without, the, you know, it's, its drawbacks, its cons. And as a gotcha game, there are certain things that you have to accept. Uh, and I'm not the biggest fan of the gotcha system, uh, particularly when it's a harsher one. But let me run you guys through the gacha system in this. So the gacha system in this is from, it's called Modulation. At the moment, there's one banner in the closed beta. All of this could change in the full game. This, you know, this is a closed beta. They're probably going to listen to feedback and change things. Uh, but at the moment, to get a five-star character like Jian, like the strongest, you could argue, coolest characters, it's a 0.8% base chance. Uh, whereas a 4% character, like the ones I showed you, my characters, that I pulled, is a 6% chance, which is also very, very low. And it's the same for weapons. Weapons are also really low at 5 star being 1.7, 4 star being 2.5, and then basically 3 star uh, weapons is 89%, so almost 90% rounded up. So when it comes to getting the rarer characters, you're looking at incredibly low odds. However, the game does have a pity system, so every 10 pulls you do, and it doesn't need to be in one, it, it saves it as you go along, which I've learned as I've played, and thanks to chat in the stream. You get a guaranteed 4-star, so that's really good. I like that you get a guaranteed 4-star, like Resonator, which is a character or a weapon. That's very, very good and nice. And every 90, you get a guaranteed 5-star weapon or Resonator. 90 is obviously quite a lot to get that 5-star. That will take quite a while as a free-to-play player unless they hand out a lot of free uh, modulations, you know, as the game is launching and released and through events and stuff like that. But I do think the rates are a little low. I would like to see the base five star rate go from 0 0.8 to 1, 2 or 3 uh, percent. Play, I've played other games in the gacha genre myself in the past, and while there have been other ones that have had under 1 percent chances, they do feel very harsh uh, when you're playing and hoping to get that one character that you really, really want. Uh, so for me, I would use uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius as a recent example where they overhauled their system a few years ago uh, and brought their highest rarity unit base rate to 3%, I believe. So I think 2 or 3% would be a really good place to bring it because 0.8% is a bit punishing at the moment. And because weapons are the main thing you're going to be getting at 89%, you know, when you're doing one summon at a time and really hoping to get a new character, you're preying on you know, on not hitting that 89%, which is a really high base rate to go for. So although it's a beta and it could change, I do really hope that the uh, the pull rates are reevaluated. That being said, through playing, there is a lot of different ways to get to those modulations to do the pulls, like the exploring and gathering those, um, those items that I showed you on the map, these box icons over here in the mini map. Uh, you get enough of them, you get like a bunch of pulls. Uh, you do get a few at certain level milestones, at least in the beta right now. They're giving you a, a good amount, so, you know, that could change. Uh, but also, you get them in other methods as you go throughout the story and, and whatnot. When it comes to the map, you know, we've been playing for a day and we've only unlocked this sort of area of the map. And this area has felt very big to explore. And there's things to collect all over the place from plants to animals to ore nodes and stuff like that. But the actual overall map size is a lot bigger and I'm not certain if this is the full full game or it's just the first area or the beta area that we can explore but this whole map is actually pretty big when you look at it overall like considering that this is quite a large area to have explored already that whole city that we were just overlooking is just this little circle here for example so it does seem like the world is pretty big and if this if there are maps beyond this then the world is absolutely massive as well so there's lots to explore Luckily as well, as we zoom in, uh, you can see there's these beacon icons and the lit up ones means I've activated them and they are fast travel points. So we can very easily fast travel around the map. Uh, the load screen isn't too bad. I imagine this will improve as well. Obviously we're in beta right now, but you can, as you can see, it was pretty quick to fast travel. 
And being in the village hub, there's a bunch of things around here that you can do. So you, over here, you've got the relic merchant. This is the one I was talking about, about upgrading uh, and getting upgrading your levels to get extra pulls. Uh, we might as well just run over there and check out. We can do some parkour and shenanigans along the way. But yeah, I've been very impressed with the action in the cutscenes so far. The overall combat and differences and uniqueness between the characters has been really, really cool to see. The base characters that we've got through the story did feel really powerful and cool as well. So it didn't I didn't feel like I had to pull to compete or to be good, or even just because I was lacking in flashy attacks. I didn't feel like I had to, which is really, really good. You can see here Chen Piazar, Antique Merchant. We can deliver all of our audio caches. I have already got level five, so we need to collect a few more. But you can see here it gives you the currency to get pulls. So we get one, then we get two on the next level, one here, two here. And this currency here can also be used to trade for additional pool chances. So when it comes to the gacha, there is a bunch of different ways that you can actually do pulls. You can see here 160 turns into another key code that lets you do another pull on the banner. So a bunch of different ways that you can do it. I didn't feel forced to do it. Obviously, a lot of cool characters are in there that you will want. But you do get these things naturally through playing unlocking the characters through the story, but also getting those pull, icon, uh, pull items that let you get what you want. Also, each character has a unique ultimate that does a super cool animation, like this super massive spin slash. Uh, I haven't actually got it on any of my other characters, but the combat is definitely the highlight for me so far. But I was super pleasantly surprised by how inviting the world was to explore and check things out. And it made me want to, you know, keep exploring while I was streaming, you do have that pressure to keep progressing in the main story, so I didn't try it. I tried not to explore too much. But overall, my day one impressions so far gameplay, super fun and engaging. World, super pleasant and nice looking to explore. And uh, the gacha system may be a little harsh right now when it comes to those four, particularly those five star characters and weapons it does seem super super rare but again it is a closed beta so i'm hoping that this will be changed and addressed i've had no performance issues so far frame rate's been really good i've streamed while running the game and it managed just fine i was even recording while streaming at some points and it was doing just fine so the performance does seem really really good too but that's my day one Wuthering waves impressions so i hope you guys enjoyed this sort of rundown me sort of just freely sharing my thoughts as they came because you know we've just finished playing so it's good to talk about all of these things with you guys and i'm just impressed by how big the map is and i'm i don't even know if there's more maps than this but i am sort of impressed if there will be but thank you for watching guys and the two videos on stream now we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this one of course you don't have to if you don't want to but if you did enjoy this video you're probably gonna like these ones too and then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below